guys, how are you? I missed you. It's Tuesday, which means that it's a Money Talk Tuesday where we discuss personal finance, investing, debt, all types of little money topics for you. Um, today we have a very interesting one. We are talking about the ABCs of lending money specifically to friends and family, which I know can be a very polarizing topic. So I'm excited to jump right in. Definitely, as mentioned before in every video, if you're not currently subscribed, you're gonna wanna hit that subscribe button so you can be notified every time I have a new video up. Let's jump right in. Okay, the ABCs of lending out money. This is a very polarizing topic, specifically because I mean, in general, I feel like lending money can be so stressful to family. I know for me, I don't know why, but I always get so awkward. Like I am like a control freak, so I have a really hard time asking people for money. And in general, sometimes when they ask me for money, it can just be really awkward. So that's why I really wanted to, sorry, my coffee machine is like, hey, coffee? <laughs> um, so that's why I really wanted to make this video. So the ABCs of money, without further ado, let's jump right in. A, A stands for assessing the situation. My earliest recollection of like family asking for money um, was the situation back, I must have been in like, it was before middle school. So I was probably like, I don't know, 10 maybe like 11 years old or something like that. And I remember it was really late at night and we heard the doorbell, which was odd because who comes to your house at like 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night on a work day, on a school day. Um, but I remember they went to the door, my parents went to the door and it was like one of my mom's like random cousins, not super close to the family, just like one of those like distant relatives who we didn't like normally see. And he was like, asking for money and you could tell just by his appearance and his demeanor and the way that he was speaking that it was like a little like druggy drug situation like you could tell that homeboy was having a hard time a hard go of it um and so definitely that was sad and concerning and definitely I don't remember exactly like how my parents like handled it. I think they like offered him food probably and was just like, we're not going to give you money because you look a mess. Um, yeah. And I remember there were like words exchanged. Like it was not a pleasant exchange. Um, but that was my first ever like recollection of like family members asking for money. And I just think it's important before we rush to judgment of just it comes cousin judy like asking me for a, a handout or whatever it's really important to assess the situation listen nowadays people are hurting okay people are losing their jobs left and right look at all the stuff that's going on in texas my heart goes out to you texas i'm in jersey so it's like we're used to the cold over here but i couldn't imagine living in a very hot climate and like having to deal with freezing temperatures and not having the shelter and the supplies to be able to do that it must be crazy so it's just like nowadays i just feel like it's so important to just not rush to judgment and just assess the situation you're not going to treat the situation the same if it's like a situation like what happened to my family when we were when i was young and like you know the person is very obviously has like a substance abuse issue you wouldn't approach it the same way as maybe your you know family member who just lost their job and has kids to feed it would be different so just a assess the situation don't jump to conclusions make sure you get all of the clarifying details before you make a definitive decision a assess the situation b b stands for boundaries boundaries are my new favorite word boundaries 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 i'm gonna get it tattooed on my face boundaries why do i love boundaries it is so important it is so important specifically with regards to finances that you really have a conversation with yourself or with your partner or with whomever your cat your dog no judgment here i do it all the time um but definitely have a conversation with yourself on what is it that you are willing to do in terms of accommodating and supporting friends and family. How far are you willing to go? It is so important that you carve that out ahead of time because you never ever wanna be in a situation where you're sitting here giving somebody money or helping somebody out 
and it's at your expense you know like i know that kind of sounds selfish like when i say it out loud but what i mean by that is like you can't save somebody from a sinking boat right like if you're on an aircraft and like something happens and the oxygen masks drop down they always say put your own mask on first and then you can help other people you can't help people if you're struggling <laughs> so definitely it's important to make sure that you have your priorities in line i could never i could never support somebody or let somebody borrow money or whatever and i'm not putting money into my uh, retirement account and i'm not my emergency fund isn't fully funded my rent is not getting paid and food is not going into my fridge no 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 so you have to make sure that you have very clear cut boundaries as far as what it is that you're able to do and what it is that you can do as long as you're not putting yourself in peril by supporting that person so boundaries are very very clear don't feel bad about it just make sure that you're taking the time to cut out what those boundaries are so that you're clear you know it's just what you got to do be for boundaries i love it moving right along c c wow i just like stuttered c stands for clarify this is a big one because i watch a lot of like dave ramsey on like youtube and like all these other like types of podcasts where people complain about their family members like borrowing money and it's always like when they did the exchange nine times out of ten when you lent that person money or that person lent you money or whatever nobody thought to like clarify the details like nobody thought to sit there and have a conversation before that exchange took place and just be like okay so when are you paying me back okay well what are you using the money for okay well like nobody sat there and thought to do that and i feel like that like muckiness and lack of clarity it adds a lot of issues to a situation so definitely if you have decided that you can and you are lending a family member money you need to clarify the details early on i'll give you a perfect example um nowadays it is not at all uncommon because of everything that is going on currently for children to either lose their job or whatever adult children i'm talking about obviously i'm not talking about like child labor my god um <laughs> for adult children to lose their jobs and end up coming back to live with their parents it's 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 unfortunate but it is extremely common i have to say honestly probably if i'm thinking about it like 60 percent of the people that i know especially if you're like under 30 you probably live at home with your parents still like it's super common so my question is always like did the parents take the time to sit there and clarify the details or any type of like contingencies or anything like that before just letting their kids come right back into the house like did you sit there and have a conversation or were you just like yeah billy like you know come on back um i think it's important to really carve out the details of an agreement before you let anybody borrow anything money whatever resources whatever it is that you're giving so it's like you know we're letting you live here but you have to be actively searching for a job we're letting you live here but you have to pay us i don't know 300 dollars in rent a month we're letting you live here but you can't have crazy parties and there can be no drug use or alcohol i'm just giving examples i have no idea what your situation is or whatever but i just want to say c is for clarify the details clarify any contingencies if you're letting this person borrow money have a date for when it is that they have to pay it back if you're letting somebody stay with you or whatever have a, a timeline for when it is that they have to move out by you know especially if it's your kid or whatever there should even be consequences built into the situation you know like i'm gonna support you and i'm gonna give you money but if you're not doing what you need to be doing then i'm gonna stop my support <laughs> you know so c is for clarify the last one on my abcs is the letter d which if you graduated kindergarten you would know that d stands for <gasps> don't expect to get your money back <laughs> and i say that i know that it sounds horrible but and i have mentioned this on prior videos i think out of all the times that i have lent people money who really needed it by the way like i don't regret giving the money because if you're asking me for money you obviously really need it um but maybe i have gotten paid back 
30% of the time, it's not a high number. And part of it is also me. Like, I'm the type of person that I'm not going to, like, hunt you down. If I let you borrow money, like, I'm not going to run after you to get my money back. Like, it's not that serious. Um, but definitely, for sure, I always say this, and I mean this wholeheartedly, you never let somebody borrow money or an item, like a thing, if you need it back. If you fully require to get it back, you never lend it to somebody else, unfortunately. That's just the, the world that we live in. That has nothing to do with the character of the particular individual that you're lending it to. It's just stuff happens. Like, things happen, you know, rough times happen, whatever the case may be. So it's like, would it be nice to get your money back if you lent it to an individual? Of course it would be, but do, should you expect it? Should your entire relationship ride on the fact that you're going to get this money back? I don't think it should because the majority of the time you may not get it back. That's just a fact, you know? So I wouldn't let that, you know, completely end my relationship with an individual. Would I probably look at them the same? Probably not. You know, would I be willing to lend the money again? Probably not. <laughs> um, but I just don't. I don't have enough confidence in most of humanity that I would ever... Wow, that sounds really dark. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to take this like in a deep in a deep kind of a way. But just I just don't lend money with the expectation that I'm going to get it back. It would be nice, you know, even like we said in the C's, clarify. I'll even be like, well, you know, what are you going to pay me back by? Okay, great. But in the back of my head, I'm not expecting it. So don't expect it. Having those lowered expectations are definitely going to help with the awkwardness at the Thanksgiving table <laughs> during the holidays. Just lower those expectations and don't always expect to get your money back. And guys, that was it. It was a quickie for you. A quickie. Um, definitely, I hope you enjoyed today's content. If you did, as mentioned, be sure to hit that subscribe button and be sure to like. If you like the video, like and leave me a comment. I would love to know what your experiences have been in terms of uh, lending out money, especially to family and friends. I always find it to be interesting. So drop me a comment below and I will catch you guys on the next one. Ooh, bye.